Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's James O. It's the Sonic Discovery Show, a very special show tonight because we've got guests coming uh, in by telephone from all over the country. And uh, we're going to be focusing on music from the 60s to right now. And um, the, uh, the special theme of this show would be uh, uh, Jim Carroll, who died about 2002 but has made his mark on rock and roll history and uh, literature as well. And particularly with this album called Catholic Boy. So we're going to talk about uh, the album, the man, the music, and the band that made him into a famous uh, musician and college radio regular. Here's uh, Day and Night. Yeah, Jim Carroll Band with Day and Night. And um, we are working on the uh, telephone uh, system that's going to get us a call from uh, Florida. And in the meantime, we're going to listen to Jim Carroll Band. This is probably a song that you have all heard before because it uh, got a lot of airplay in uh, right around 1980. And it's... We're going to play City Drops Into the Night. I know we've done this before because I think Mike called our points. You, you and I were. Twin Billy's whores are working. They're working with the skeleton crew. It's when the sky will be sky starts to drain from view when my woman pawns her voice so so she can make her old excuses sound new but I just want one clue cause when the city drops into the night before the darkness there's one more Drops to see the 
ambitious little girl Stop, it's not the dream of that I change its style It's when the slick boys got their fingers They got their fingers in a telephone dial But I think I'll just wait a while But you should, you should come with me I'm the fire, I'm the fire's reflection uh, I'm just a constant warning Just a constant warning To take the other direction Mister, I am your connection It's when the city drops into the night Before the darkness is one more
Jim Carroll Band, and City Drops Into the Night. And we are expecting to have Terrell um, Wynn on the line. He's the guitarist from uh, the Jim Carroll Band and other members. Um, If we can get him, get the telephones working here in the studios of KSVY, it may end up being a, a speakerphone right over to you. So let's listen to Crow with Jim, the Jim Carroll Band. Jim Carroll was a poet who came out from New York City, um, in the late 70s, looking to escape from the crazed drugs and art scene in New York. And uh, he ended up in the crazed music scene here. But his poetry became the music of the Jim Carroll Band, and particularly this album, Catholic Boy. So here we go with Crow on KSVY 91.3 FM, the Sonic Discovery Show. Just fall from the stage And snap a bone that is so close to the brain And be attended to by so many down below I saw a doctor tie you up from so far above And you start singing just like light through a black floor You start sliding like burnt skin through a side door But crow when you throw yourself under Here in a bookstore, hey, to be surrounded by a history of your true loves, and you get naked between deep shelves in a back room, and have your brain get jammed by sharp fluorescent light tubes, and you start spinning like the pillars in the temple, you start screaming just like Sister Amy Sample, the crow, when you throw yourself under, the streets are hard when you cannot lose control, hey, All right, so that was Crow uh, by the Jim Carroll Band, and we do have on our on our smartphone we've got Terrell and Frank, and they're members of the Jim Carroll Band. And um, what we're going to do is uh, probably have to keep keep the keep it real tight. No no background music or anything like that, just so we can understand you. Terrell, how are you doing? Uh, well, I'm doing much better now that I've gotten through to you. <laughs> yeah, this is James O, and I'm sitting here with Steve Malone, who you know, and um, we've been playing some of the Jim Carroll band, and and I. It's also Frank who's here. Yes. All right, um, and and I know Terrell, you were a guitarist. Uh, you are still a guitarist, but guitarist for the Jim Carroll band. And Frank, w- w- you- I'm a bassist. I uh, I uh, played with Terrell and Brian. Uh, long before the Jim Carroll Band became the Jim Carroll Band. Fantastic. So it was the band. <laughs> and uh, still playing? Yes. 
Yes, yeah, definitely. yeah. We're going to talk about your uh, the the music you guys are making now. But Terrell, could you talk a little bit about how you uh, how you came to to the San Francisco sort of music scene, and then how you met Jim Carroll, and and how he he wasn't a musician really before you met him. No, he wasn't actually, and um, he came to us because he was writing some stuff for the Blue Oyster Call, and um, and he lived with Patty Patty Smith. And um, they traded off. He would uh, teach her poetry, and she would try to show him how to front a band. And um, we were all living in the in the same town. Um, what happened is to back it up a little bit. Frank and I, and Brian, and Wayne, who was the drummer from Jim Carroll Band, we were a band in Amsterdam. We played together. And we called ourselves Rock Steady, and we played there. Um, and, and had a lot of success playing around Europe. And then uh, my equipment got stolen, so we um, came back to the United States and, um, you know, regrouped. Frank stayed with us for a while, and he decided that the kind of music he wanted to play was a little bit different than what we were doing, and he took off to do his own things and had success doing his own music. Brian and Wayne and I stuck together and got his nephew, who is uh, Stephen Lensley, it's his nephew, not his brother, and um, we started uh, trying to play gigs around, and we did, and then uh, someone told me, you should meet this guy, he works with a voice to cult, he's a lyricist, he's a poet surprise, uh, author of poetry, he's got a book uh, called Basketball Dives, his name's Jim Carroll, and uh, I remember I approached him one day walking down the street in the town we lived in, and um, I said, hey, uh, you want to jam some time? He said, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first contact was not very constructive there. Now, and, 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 no, it wasn't. Uh, and am I am I correct? You you kept talking about the town you guys uh, came together. Was this San Francisco, or were you nearby? No, we're it's in northern in Marin, northern Marin on the beach. Ah, the town that shall not be named. It always tears down its sign. Afterwards, <laughs> 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 uh, you know, there were a lot of people there who wanted their protection and anonymity, and uh, that was one thing that attracted Jim because he wanted to get out of the scene that he was in. Uh, you know, for a very long time, Hell's Kitchen and. Um, you know, around the wrong people, and you're starting to, to um, I guess, reinvent himself. And uh, that was the place he started, and I met him, and then after that weird introduction, I pursued him, and um, so did Brian. And eventually he, he came to us and said, look, I'm going to New York. Uh, what you can do with this, these lyrics? And you threw a bunch of lyrics at us. And I couldn't make heads or tails of it, really. And Brian said, well, I, I'll try it, but I've never done it this way. So we both, we used to write and do our own lyrics. And uh, so he, he wrote some chords, and I wrote some melodies to one of the songs. And when Jim came back, we got together and we played. And Frank was there, actually, for that. And um, wow, so you... how he felt about that situation. Uh, Frank, you still there? I'm still, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just kind of laughing at the protection of the town, which I agree with. <laughs> However, uh, uh, no, it was, uh, it, it was really at a time when the music, um, when the music really was going through a lot of changes coming out of the late 60s and the 70s. And, and, um, you know, I guess, uh, Every ten years or so, the music, uh, music styles, and so forth change. New stuff comes around, and uh, this stuff was really new, really different. And um, because uh, you know, it, it was the beginning of the of the punk uh, generation, and so forth. But um, Jim's Jim's stuff was. Even though a lot of people associated him with, you know, one of the punk generation performers, it was nothing like it. Um, but it was, it was experimental, it was new, it was unknown, and uh, as for myself, um, what I had heard from other mu uh, music and bands of that time, I wasn't quite sure if that was an original one or 
to take, which was one of the reasons why I left. Um, but it was very innovative, and you know, of course, the lyrics were something else, like all of its writing. Um, it was going to check Kerouac of of Francois. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, you know, because it's just, uh, I mean, to me, uh, you know, the musically, the position that I was in and what I was attracted to, um, the new movement that was going on musically was, uh, in a lot of ways, there was a lot of noise was going on, which I uh, had my doubts about. But um, well, uh, outside of being that aggressive, the in-your-face kind of um, approach to music, um, there was... The music and the lyrics were a lot deeper than the general genre that um, that had taken off. Well, and I think and, it's. Uh, I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, in the 70s, a, a rock had become, you know, so established, uh, you know, production was, was a huge part of what made money, and, and some, uh, I think a lot of musicians and, and poets felt that there, a lot of that music had no, no real center, no, no real message in, you know, inside, it's, it wasn't a cliche, so, so really it was, maybe it was before the term punk, but we're talking about r- real, really uh, roots, you know, getting back to the... Um, so the DIY ethic, I mean, a lot of things that are pretty well established and maybe have now become the mainstream again, but, you know, let's, let's remember well, the, well, the words and the music. Think that's his yeah. You know, <laughs> what, what are you going to expect, you know? <laughs> the guy talking about Sinner, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, uh, you know, he plays all the bass instruments, bass clef. So that's why we hit it off, because... I'm totally opposite. I play melodies, and that's all I wanted to play was melodies. Brian, he only wanted to do was play like John McLaughlin and play chords. <laughs> and he did borrow a few. So the many even before Jim got with us, we were doing progressive stuff. We were an improv group. Rocksteady was an improv group. We never, whatever we rehearsed, we never played live. Whatever we did live was invented as we played it. You know, oh, wow. Never, yeah. A lot of improvisation. <laughs> well, before we uh, we uh, continue okay, with that, the Jim Carroll band and and it's sort of the uh, the uh, br- breakout of the Jim Carroll band, and then in some ways the breakup, uh, or at least of the original conception. Let's hear what most people have heard, but maybe haven't heard for quite a while. This, of course, is probably the the, the biggest. Uh, uh, hit, as it were. <laughs> Although, when you consider that the um, the theme is death, I don't think we were going to look at the the Billboard Top Ten. This, of course, Jim Carroll Band and People Who Died. In upper Manhattan, flying Vietnam, pulled it in the head. Bobby O. D. Dondrino on the night that he was wet. They were two more friends of mine. From a cell in the tombs Judy jumped in front of a subway train Eddie got split in the jugular vein And Eddie, I miss you more than all the others And I salute you, brother Some goof. 
But Herbie sure gave Tony some, some bitch and fruit. And Herbie said, Tony, can you fly? But Tony couldn't fly. Tony died. on a narco rap he beat the rap by ratting on some bikers he said hey i know it's dangerous but it sure beats rikers but the next day he got off by the very same biker People Who Died, Jim Carroll Band, and uh, this is James O. I'm here with my friend Steve Malone, and our friends from the Jim Carroll Band are on the line. Uh, we've got Terrell Wynn, Frank, Frank the Bassist. I didn't get your name, Frank. Uh, I lost him with Meyer. Okay, Frank Meyer and, and Terrell Wynn, uh, and, and Terrell, you're, you're calling all the way from Fort Lauderdale, correct? No. I hate Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the West Coast of All right. Florida. Well, I'm in sunny Sarasota. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I do understand that the uh, that uh, people who died did did actually pretty well locally. Hey, hey you guys, hold hold on just a second. I think we got Brian on the line. Hold on. Let's see if we can get oh, yeah. a third member of the band here. Hey, Brian, is that you? Yeah, is that you, Steve? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're on the air right now. Um, okay. But I'm trying to figure out how to patch you in. Let's see if, if this will work. Hold on. This is the miracle of yeah. Steve's iPhone. Everybody else still there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. I, th- I think we got Brian on now. All right. So all right. I'm here for Santa Rosa. Yeah. So all right, there he is. It's Bert, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Mr. Wynn and Frank. Hi. All right, so on this. And all of our friends in Santa Rosa, California. What's going on out there? We're in. We're in. Well, we're just sitting here telling lies. So, you know, join in. (laughs) We're in Santa Rosa. We're in uh, Sonoma. It is KSVY 91.3 FM. We got uh, uh, Brian Lindsley and Frank Meyer and Terrell Wynn from the Jim Carroll Band and Rocksteady and actually playing music in bands for what? Getting on thirty years, guys. Tell, tell forty. Forty, yeah. It's just tell me what what happened with people who died and and with the album. How did go, how did how did you guys tour around it and everything? Hey Brian, I've been talking enough so far. Oh Brian, yeah. Well, well, I mean, well, yeah. I mean, uh, when uh, people who died was released, uh, and it finally hit the uh, radio stations. Where did they break that? I uh, forget in New York City, and I think. Uh, 
Tom Donahue in San Francisco, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Scott Muni in New York. Right. That's Scott Muni in New York. And uh, once that, uh, you know, you get it going on the radio, then uh, people want to hear you. And uh, we did uh, two back-to-back tours uh, across the country that were just uh, really a blast. We had great crowds, um, a lot of sell out each show, and and just uh, kind of a really good group of fans who used to come to the shows. That's amazing. I mean, I, it really was. Uh, it was one of those things. Feeling good about feeling bad, you know. <laughs> the the uh, <laughs> it's like the blues. I mean, it's just the best of rock. I mean, it, you, it was survival there in in the in the words and the music of uh, the Jim Carroll band. Right. And then and then uh, he he, he the, I, it sounds like the record company kind of got to him, and and uh, the next album just wasn't the same. Well, that's because they lost their uh, writing. The writers, right. the writers being you guys, who wrote the music, they left. The, that's because you guys. Were... Yeah, I, I think the unfortunate thing there was that um, that Terrell and I had uh, asked for a little increase in our uh, pay um, for the second record and. Uh, you know, they just were playing real hardball, and uh, uh, Earl McGrath said he could get, uh, uh, you know, another dozen guitar players for 10 cents. Uh, uh-huh. We gave him a dime and said, go get him if that's the way you want to do it. Uh, we had a kind of, <laughs> an agreement on that first record that any profits and, and money made from the tour and, and the shows that we did would be split up equally at the end of the year. So, uh uh, what we did was try to work on uh, some budget so that we would uh, be splitting up a little more money a little later on. But when that time came, of course, uh, the story was that the money was all gone and that, uh, you know, the expenses were much more than they had anticipated for the tour. But um, that wow. wasn't true. It's that old story. It's a, a major label? Yeah, it's the same story. Yeah. What was the label? Uh, that was Apco Records. Um, originally, right there, we were uh, signed to Rolling Stones Records. We were, what, six months, six months was Rolling Stones Records before they uh, moved the contract. I'm not sure exactly how that logistically worked, but we ended up releasing Catholic Boy under Apco. But uh, Actually, the first uh, release was on Rolling Stones Records. Uh, first a and B side on the 45. Who died. And then, uh, what was the second song? B side? Yeah, it was uh, I Want the Angel on the other side. I Want the Angel, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Anybody who's a collector out there, you can find 45 on uh, Rolling Stones Records, the Jim Carroll band. There are only three bands on that label. It was Peter Tosh, the Stones, and the Carroll band. So, it's, it's a rarity. Wow. People yeah, who died and I Want the Angel. Okay. Let me know. I'll buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, you have yeah, to check that out on eBay. We don't know. So, so th- you guys kept playing uh, without Jim Carroll, or, or you stopped for a while. What, what, uh, my understanding is that the the music never dies, and you've 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 been been recording or playing recently. Terrell. Well, you know, I, there's quite a few years in there before. We got to what we're at now. Um, Brian and I had a couple of bands called New Design, uh, well, Design and New Design. We played with um, a couple of people who uh, made a one is Andy Preboy, who was our lead singer, and he left and joined uh, Concrete uh, Blonde. Wall of Voodoo. Yeah. He became their lead singer and had his own show on, on uh, MTV. Uh, Wall of Voodoo, okay. We music with him. Um, and then uh, we kind of stopped after a while because we kept trying to get signed, and for some reason, uh, our lawyer couldn't get us uh, a newspaper. No one wanted to sign us. And we found out that uh, we were being blackballed because of uh, leaving the Jim Carroll band. That's the kind of pull people have in the industry. It's oh, so, them. 
So you're saying that the labels were were uh, because they had laid you off from the Jim Carroll band, and nobody else would would hire you, would would uh, give you a, a a deal. Well, what I'm saying is, Brian and I quit, and that pissed them off. So they were right. vindictive, and uh, we couldn't get a gig. Yeah. So, yeah, and the music was definitely signable. Right. So, uh, we couldn't understand why, and we found out later. Um, I think Brian found out too through his channel that that's what was going on. Is that is that what you found out, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much, uh, that was the right word. Um, Carol and I had gotten an offer from um, what was his name there at uh, Warner Brother Records. Uh, it was Mo Austin and his son, Mike Austin, and uh, my kid said, you know, if things don't work out with the Jim Carroll band, um, you know, come on out to California and we'll, you know, put you to work that producing some records. So we'll just sort of see where it goes from there. And uh, they were working with ACDC at the time. But uh, by the time in, uh, in the few days that it took for us to get an airfare together and to get to... Uh, Los Angeles, the word was out that we were for signing and non gratis and uh, you know, not to be not to be signed for any you know, kind of production agreement or anything to do with one or Atlantic or Wow. You know, of course it's, it's, uh, <laughs> um, All you wanna do is get records was a big label at the time. And I, under Ahmed Erdogan the, you know he uh, kind of ran the thing, ran, ran the show like a mafia boss, and yeah, right, right, yeah. man, yeah. So, so all you want to do is make a living making music, and uh, but you, yeah. they, you, you haven't been chosen as the stars, and that means they're gonna just stamp you out or label you outlaws. Wow. Well, also, our group is in the pudding because to this day they're still playing our songs somewhere in the world. Right. I get royalties. We all get the I, Brian and I both get the statements. They said they're playing in Denmark, they're playing in South America, they're playing in Asia. The songs are still being played. Wow. But the percentages are off. <laughs> Somebody's still making money. It's just that we get pennies while other people are getting dollars. Yeah, so yeah. That's still story. So you're still getting ro- royalties from Catholic Boy? From yeah. from that album, that's fantastic. When it gets played on uh, the international radio, it's it, it's part of the international that's, pop scene. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, what's that? Uh, Sirius Radio or uh, XM Radio? It's on one of the. Uh, All right, satellite one radio. One or two of the special shows, you know, the new wave shows that they have, the historical shows. Um, I, I I think that if we, um, if, what Carol and I had talked with uh, Jim. Well, not directly with Jim, um, but with uh, Earl McGrath, who was sort of managing Jim, and, and it was one of those conquer and divide things and kept us apart from Jim. But I, I think that Phil uh, and I had really not asked for anything unreasonable, considering our success that we had with the Catholic Boy record to, you know, uh, to, to get a little, share a little bit more of the profits and the money, and I think we could have done a killer second album. Again, at the last minute, the decision was that they could do it uh, uh, on a cheaper basis, and that's when they brought in um, two other guitar players, one of each guy over here. Who? And over there, and they, other guitar know. players who shall remain nameless, uh, but probably hacks is the best way to describe them. Um, so, uh, yeah. hang on, guys. You know, just so uh, I can remind everyone what this is all about here. Um, it's James O on the Sonic Discovery Show with Steve Malone, and we've got on the line members of the Jim Carroll Band, um, Terrell Wynn and uh, Steve Lindsley and uh, Frank Meyer, and this is a little bit of one the the title track of the Catholic Boy album. From uh, 1980, was it?
Yeah, I want the angel from the Catholic Boy album, and this is James O, and uh, we're on the line with Terrell and Brian and Frank, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe the Jim Carroll band uh, back in uh, the early 80s did not stay the same, and uh, the record company screwed you, but the music never dies, huh? So you guys got a new project going. Of course, Jim Carroll is not a an active member. Having uh, died in 2002. What, what year did he die, Terrell? He, he died, uh, what, two, three years ago. Yeah, that's what I thought, about two, 2010, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I went to his general. Okay. Uh, uh, Stevie and I both went there, represented the, the original band. And, uh, you know, I, it was pretty cool. It was like a lake, you know, because he's Irish. Oh, yeah. I had old points about him. This was in New York. I had, I had talked to Jim uh, probably about four or five years earlier about putting the band back together again. You know, there's been quite a bit of success with bands uh, reorganizing and coming back out. And we showed a, a fair amount of interest, but I think that the truth was that the uh, heroin addiction had pretty well um, taken its physical toll on him. And so it... Uh, it never really transpired, but uh, I, you know, I always wonder what that would have been like. Uh, I think this band really well could have rocked on out that, you know. And, yeah, uh, Jim Carroll uh, definitely was physically debilitated by that uh, by the heroin addiction. So I mean, things right. things like writing, you know, could maybe could do uh, book uh, poetry readings, things like that in his later years. But probably getting up on stage and it's taken some good souls. Yes. Hoffman, Lou Reed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before they really uh, lived to a ripe old age, but uh, certainly, oh my God, they, they, what what legacies they left. And we could put together a show out there in Santa Rosa. We could all uh, put together like a little one uh, reunion or a couple nights reunion out there in Santa Rosa to support your station and... Uh, well, yeah, we're 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 actually in the city of Sonoma, but uh, close clo- clo- close enough. Yeah, we think of Santa Rosa as the boring city next door, but yeah, yeah come on. Yeah, yeah, which which so we got this uh, kind of. Uh, I'm still here. Yeah, and you're in Sebastopol, so just about an hour away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we ought to do that. Sonoma would be a great location. We ought to put like together a couple of nights from there. And, yeah. We just got to bring Carol in from Florida, and, and uh, we could roll in there. Yeah, that would be cool. A couple hours of rehearsal and do a pretty wild show. I can promise you that. Well, tell us a little bit about the um, the this the, this new project and and the um, you've actually used Jim Carroll's uh, words for at least one new song. Right, no, it's extension. And um, what I did was I went to uh, last year. I've been talking to the drummer Paul Zoll uh, up and on, and we, for the last twenty five thirty years, we always said. Hey, we got to play together, and we never did. So he he went to uh, the Tuxedo Moon. He went on tour in Europe, and he ended up in the Love in Love and Stano in uh, Belgium. So last year, um, my wife sent me over there to, to uh, work with Paul because he, he had been in a car accident where he was on a bicycle in the car game. So he was in a lot of pain, and but he was still you know persevering with the music, playing drums and recording. He has a recording studio in this house. So I went over thinking, well, I need to get a band together again, and I want to work with the people that I know works. One is Schrockmeyer, 
And uh, Brian Leslie, we did it before. I think we could do it again. This time we have a different drummer, but uh, I think he could cut it. And um, I went over and we sat down in the studio and we did seven songs and all but one was first take. So what you're hearing is the first take. Oh, and, fantastic. Um, Wait, now, do you, are, you, did, are you saying that you... Uh, <laughs> You you put the tracks together separately, or did you guys all get into the studio in Belgium? No, it was it was a, we haven't finished it. This is a demo. Oh, I okay. Just went in and did the guitar. I got and, it. And did uh, what I could do with Paul. He put down the drums, and we had Chad sing uh, one of the songs. I sang the other song, and now we we want to. I've got Brian's got a copy of it. Uh, Frank's got a copy of it, and the next step is to get a good solid mix and do something with it. Fantastic. So Frank, Frank, Frank and I actually, because of the distance there, haven't been actually playing those tracks, but um, over these years, um, I've been playing in a band called Junior Giant with my son Spencer, um, and we were out on the road with Hoopus Bank, um, the whole study and drive-by truckers and various things, and uh, I know Frank's been working with uh, Michael Henderson, the uh, the great blues guy, and uh, I, I just know that uh, you know from playing the instrument every day for the last forty years that we're all ready, ready in a heartbeat to uh, we could just do the show and lock it out on a very short notice. And I, I think it'd be a pretty interesting, spontaneous kind of old school approach. And uh, Carol's already planted the seed there with the uh, with the recording with. Fantastic. Well, let's, let's hear just a few bars. I'm going to hear a few bars of tension, guys, and then we're going to come back and and sign off on the show. But here's here's tension, the, the current project of Terrell and uh, Paul Zoll, and uh, it's going to be coming to your town with uh, Brian and Frank, the whole band, back together. Tension. Yes, that is the uh, the band uh, with Tara Wynn and uh, and Paul Zoll and uh, the band that is getting back together is the resurrection of the Jim Carroll band. And <laughs> folks, I understand the new name coming to a to a stage near you. My middle finger. <laughs> All right, guys. So. Um, so yeah, t- tell a little bit more about the, the the project, about the the songs you've got together. Or is it all new repertoire? Uh, new and stuff that's never been recorded, um, just resurrected. And uh, you know, Brian and Frank and I are song factories. So once we get in the same room, I, I have no fear that there's going to be a couple of albums within the next. You know, once we do this. In the next six months, we could have a, a, a good album that's almost done now, and then within the next year, have done a couple more albums. If we're serious and if people are serious about hearing us, 
but you know it always takes money that's all it takes well, it looks like it might might be a, a an opportunity for um, crowdsourcing or or uh, pledge music or one of those websites to get you a little uh, upfront money for because I'm sure folks want to hear you um, generate that music and and whether it's your uh, uh, new words or words from Jim Carroll, um, it just I, I'd be really excited to hear it and. Um, We've been speaking to Terrell Wynn, the guitarist for the uh, Jim Carroll Band and now uh, the new project, and Brian Lindsley, guitarist as well, and uh, Frank Meyer on the bass. And I guess you guys are going to have to get a drummer here in the States, right? Or do you have one? No, we're, right now we're still looking at Paul. Oh, okay. Uh, if he doesn't want to uh, continue with our project, um, my little brother, he's not blood brother, but I am very close with him. Um, Aaron Brooks is in New York and he played with Beck and um, he's played with everybody. I mean, he's a studio drummer and Great. he's been, you know, biting at our heels to find a play with us. And who's the he's singer? Monster. Can, can, who's the singer, the female vocalist? She's got a great voice. She does have a great voice. I'd, I'd like to steal it, but. She's married to Paul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get Paul as a drummer, yeah, then you'll have her but singing. You know, okay. Um, well, it, right now we're open to what's going on. Uh, it, you know, we get to the point where we start auditioning singers. That may happen. You never know. It may just happen with Kat and Paul. All right. Um, well, let's close doors to anything. We're open for all possibilities. All right. And, um, I'd like to see this happen this year. Well, that's really exciting. The, the band, uh, uh, which is, has a working title, My Middle Finger, the, the resurrection of the Jim Carroll Band. And um, it's been great talking to all you guys. I'm going to uh, finish off the Sonic Discovery show with um, Will I Die Alone. And f- stay tuned for the Folk and Blues Hours, everybody. It's uh, Shawn Michael up next. Guys, it's been great talking with you, Frank, Terrell, and uh, Brian. Thank you very much. Good luck, and I think yeah, folks pleasure. can uh, get a little uh, uh, more information uh, on. You've got a blog, right? Terrell Win, Terrell Win dot or dot org, or uh, uh, just use it. Just use the search engine. So check it yeah, out, you folks. Can, you can go there. Um, I'm also a Twitter. Okay. Uh, I'm not really technical that way, so I have to have a service on. But if people start, you know, showing up on there, I'll definitely keep in contact. Uh, I'm open to anything, really. All right. Come on out to Sonoma, and we'll rock uh, downtown Sonoma for you. Fantastic. Keep on rocking, guys. Here it is. Yeah. Will I Die Alone? Sonic Discovery. There you go. Thanks, guys. Okay, nice.
Sonoma.